Hey, hello everybody. This is our first video today. This is Steve. Today we're talking about the different alcohols in Korea, Taiwan, and Japan. Yeah, and I'm Toby, and I've lived in Korea for about two and a half years, and I have partaken in many uh, Korean spirits. I'm Tate. I've been in Korea for almost a year, and uh, I've had uh, some makgeolli and some soju. Some soju from Korea. This stuff's pretty infamous. Um, this stuff right here is kind of a hard alcohol. Does anyone actually know how this is made? Well, as far as I know, there's like... The, there's like more of a traditional way that it's made. It's it's like it's actually like fermented and then distilled. Okay. Uh, uh, and the the distillation process is like kind of similar to other spirits. It's just diluted. But I think like this kind of soju, like it's literally just like industrial alcohol, and then it's just like diluted. So there's no like actual distillation. They just add alcohol and dilute it. I see. <laughs> so it's good and cheap. Like, like yeah. a bottle like this is like what, like a buck fifty or. If you're getting it in Korea, it'll probably cost you about <clears throat> two thousand Korean won, which U.S. is probably two bucks. Yeah, two bucks. Yeah, there's a lot of rumors that this stuff is pretty much made of just chemicals. Yeah. All right. So then next we 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 have a a nice uh, beer from Gangwon-do, which is the largest province in South Korea. Um, so we'll have to see. I haven't tried this particular kind. Before. What is the name of that one? It's Gangsa. Gangsa. For anyone that can read Korean up there. Yeah. Well, it says it in English as well, like Gong, Gongsa. Yeah, the next one we have is from Taiwan. This is pretty infamous in itself, too. Oh. Uh, this stuff is called Galyang. Um, it has quite a reputation for being pretty strong. It's about 58%, and it's a clear alcohol. This stuff is enjoyed a lot by the local by the older generation, but you won't meet too many younger people who really love this stuff. Next we just have uh, Premium Yabiso Premium Black. Is this... Yeah, that's a Tokyo oh, beer. Also Japanese, another Japanese, Japanese, Japanese beer. beer. Tokyo. And this is an interesting one. This stuff's been kind of making its rounds in Asia. I don't actually know what this stuff's called. My friend that lives in Japan kind of called it a Chuhai. But it's a very, very fruity drink that's about 9% alcohol. It looks like it would, it basically tastes like juice, but it packs a punch. Our standard Taiwan beer. Would you just say this is your, your go-to in uh, Taiwan? Yeah, what Toby's holding there is pretty much the standard beer. This is what most people drink. It's kind of their main domestic. What I have is sort of, it's called 18 Days. And it's kind of an upgraded version. It's still a lager, but it has... A smoother taste and it's a little better, a little better quality, a little more expensive. Our first beer today is the Taiwan 18 Days. Just my initial feeling was that it definitely smelled a bit skunked. Yeah, it has that skunk smell, kind of like Heineken, right? It has a similar yeah, yeah, Heineken smell. definitely has that, like a perpetually. Let's smell. have that. Let's let's give this one a try. It kind of, it's just a lager, but a little nicer than the regular Taiwan beer. Not bad. It's like. It's I think it's pretty crisp, like a like a good lager would be. It's got a fairly, fairly flat flavor. The taste the taste doesn't linger long, but at least no. you have a wheat flavor. It's in not it. bad, and I don't really taste any skunkiness, like this despite the despite the smell. There's like an initial tingle when you sip initial, on initial it. Initial tingle, right? Or I don't like, know what you're saying. Like I don't know. In your throat or no, on your tongue. On your the tongue. tip of your tongue. Okay. Now, how would you say this ranks next to like the Thai, the Korean, like domestic beer? I would say this is probably better than uh, all of the standard domestic Korean beer. So like height and Cass. Yeah. What's your impression of yeah. it? It's okay. Yeah, like like I swear I swear like height has like a, a lingering aftertaste that's not height is not great yeah. for that. Okay. So for the for the next beer we're gonna try our uh, our beer from Gongwon Do, so this is Gong Gongsa. And it's just a, a mild ale. I'm sure, it'll taste. Yeah, it's pretty clear. It is significantly okay. different from the the lager that we mm. just tried. No, one hundred percent sure it's a lager. Should we clean out our glasses first? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try the. Uh, I forget the name. The Gangsa. Gangsa. 
You guys, it's definitely like actually an ale. It's not a lager with the name yeah. ale on it. That does have a crisp flavor to it. Yeah, this is this is really this is quite good. There's a little bit of hoppiness to it. Nice, nice smell. Maybe a little fruity. Yeah, I might mean a little bit in there. It almost tastes like a pale ale. Yeah, it does. It has like a it has a nice pale ale. It's a very mild flavor. pale ale. The taste isn't overly. It's not overpowering. No, it's actually very very good for Korea, to be honest. Yeah, this is really like, good for, for Korean standards. Yeah, like, I would, like, you typically don't find beers like this. Like, like in uh, the convenience stores, you wouldn't see, like, this beer in in your typical, like, GS25 or 7 or something like that. That's not bad at all. It's yeah. a hell of a lot better than the first one. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Our last beer is from Japan. This is the Ibisu. It's uh, brewed in, in uh, Tokyo. I've been to the brewery. It's really nice. This is the premium Ibu Ibisu Black. So I'm guessing this is going to have a pretty strong aftertaste. And it's going to be a little heavier. So it's going to be a black malt ale. So I'm guessing a little bit sweet, a little dark. That sounds really good. Well, let's give it a try. Yeah, it's like, it's like the, the creamy like meal in a, in a can <laughs> kind of flavor. I like this one. You like this one? Kind of tastes a little bit like food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's, ham. it's ham. <laughs> like ham. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's much more like savory kind of beer. A rich, deep, deep flavor as the name would suggest. It's yeah. a little heavier than the other two. Yeah, yeah, it's heavier. It's just more like a stout, but it's quite, quite good. Now, I was going to point out most of uh, the Japanese domestics are more like um, Sapporo and Kirin, and there's one more, Asahi. Asahi, oh, okay, yeah. Those are all decent for Asian domestics, but this is definitely a step above those. Right. What was your favorite of the three? I think they just, each one got better. Actually, I don't know, between the second and third, it's hard to say, because this yeah. one's, the first, the second one was like hoppy and crisp, and then this one's like... Yeah. Dark and tastes like food. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I kind of I think it depends on it depends on which kind of beer you like to drink more. But I think the the hoppier one was my favorite of the ones we've had. Yeah, when it comes to these two, it might kind of depend on your taste, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I like the hoppy flavors better than the darker malty flavors. So yeah, like the three the three of them are all pretty decent beers. I think Korea, the Korean beer wins for me. Yeah, I think the Korean beer wins for me as well. So my verdict is is that I would say J Japan is probably the best of the three countries when it comes just to beer. The, the domestics are like definitely a step above the Korean and Taiwan domestics, and they have some really nice craft breweries. But Taiwan has a lot of cool craft breweries that are starting. I think it's going to evolve. In Korea, I'm not really sure. It seems like they're a little behind the times. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there is some craft brew kind of stuff coming up in Korea, but it's nowhere near as developed as like Japan or especially like North America. Okay, so the first beer that we're going to try this evening is your standard Chaom Soju. Uh, so I think most people who are familiar with Korea know all about Soju. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, about, this one is 17.5%. So, um, not quite like vodka, but pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't quite have the like strong aftertaste of vodka, I don't think. Yeah, because it's just, it's basically just like, I like to think of it as almost like vodka that's just diluted. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> not really, more chemically, yeah, maybe. Chemi <laughs> yeah, I, I quite like so, even though a lot of people kind of hate it. I mean, my No, I quite, I, I quite like it. Yeah. And Korea these days is. Uh, the flavored sojus are really popular, and everyone's just kind of like drinking the flavored ones that have like grapefruit flavor and great like grape flavored apple soju. Right, so those are really popular, and they're probably a little more palatable. Yeah, definitely. And much this more is palatable. the original. I mean, it's it's very <laughs> very much just alcohol flavor. Yeah, alcohol flavor. Yeah. So we're gonna take like a little shot. Cheers. Sunday. 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 It's not too bad. In like shot form, I, I think soju is like pretty palatable. It's not too bad. Yeah. Like, you know, because when you take a shot, I'm used to kind of having that 
that like feeling in your throat, that nasty alcohol flavor. It's like yeah. lingering. Your whole body feels like it's on fire. With soju, it's very mild. No, you do you do get that like little like chemically like aftertaste. Yeah, I can of, still taste it. <laughs> the, 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 the soju's, but no. The only thing I remember mean, the first time I tried soju, I put the, I had a shot of it and I literally spit it out because it tasted like I was drinking chemicals. Yeah. And it was my second day in Korea yeah. and I had no idea what it was. Yeah, I think it's something that like grows on you the more you drink it. Like the first time, it's just like the worst thing, but then, <laughs> but then all of a sudden, like within a few months of being there, you're just drinking it. It's yeah, fun. and it goes really well with like dinners and stuff, and there's yeah. even some drinking games that specifically go with soju. Mm. The next one I'm going to try is Galleon. This is not <laughs> quite so palatable. Um, soju is at 17.5%. This is 58%. And I think this is a made of rice of some kind, but this is pretty much Taiwan's strongest alcohol. <laughs> Brace yourselves. It's going to be like, a, like rubbing alcohol experience. Oh, God. Is that, is now that, I'm is that a shot or a, or a finger? Are you trying it? It's really not that bad. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, we just gotta it go. Smells we gotta go. Absolutely like, horrible. We gotta oh, go. Fuck. Well. <laughs> cheers. So cheers. Bad. Cheers, mate. It's not. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, but definitely not the best. <coughs> That's oh. really bad. <laughs> that aftertaste sucks. That sucks. That's horrible. It's so yeah, bad. It kind of That's horrible. It's definitely, oh, it's like like any vodka oh. would be better than that. Yeah, in this my is. Opinion. That's this is by far the worst alcohol today. Oh my god. This kind of reminds <laughs> me of like freshman year of college, all the plastic oh. vodka that I drank. Yeah. And I feel like I my stomach I'm... is just on fire right now. There's like a pit. yeah, just like it just burns like kind of all yeah. the way down. I just really don't like the aftertaste. It's like so shitty tasting. It's and like, it's just like your throat is hot. <laughs> like, no, there's nothing. There's nothing pleasant about this alcohol. Um, don't try this. Yeah. But this stuff, from what I understand, is called Chuhai. It comes from Japan. There's a lot of fruity varieties. The one we have today is apple, and it's nine percent alcohol. Okay. It's just like carbonated apple alcohol goodness. Tastes like syrupy. <laughs> syrupy? <laughs> like not real. Like like artifi artificial artificial, artificial flavors. flavors. I'm sure. It's yeah, like there's certainly no real flavors. apples in this. Yeah. But not bad for like it's just nine percent. But nine percent is apple. really really cheap. Yeah. It's about one dollar fifty U.S. Some sort of crappy apple candy. Pretty much apple candy alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being in Tokyo and trying these, and we were already drinking beers. Yeah. And just one or two of these cans will put you over the edge. I mean, they're nine percent, eleven percent. Some of them are wow. strong, but they don't taste anything like it. Yeah, no. Very fast. In all our opinions, Korea or Japan won the best beer. What do you guys think so, of so the hard alcohol that we tried today? Now, Tate, what was your take? What was the best? I like. Wait. So we had the soju. The Galleon. Galleon. <laughs> I think Galleon. And the Chuhai. Chuhai. The Chuhai yeah, is the best. Chuhai. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Soju because the. Yeah, I'm not like a huge fan of the like super sweet drinks. No, and I can't imagine the Gal. Galleon uh, hangover <laughs> being very <laughs> just drink it. There's nothing. You know, I got to say, I. I think personally, as good as the Chu Hai is, and it really is, if you like fruity drinks or if you want to just have a good drink that's really strong and you don't want to have the taste of alcohol, Chu Hai is amazing. But in my opinion, the soju wins. Korea knows how to make their hard alcohol. Soju comes in all kinds of flavors, apple, grapefruit, and soju is one of the most unique, awesome hard alcohols in the whole world. So I, I pick Korea for the beer and the hard alcohol. Yeah, and this, and this, yeah, with what we tried, I, I'm completely, I completely agree with that. I'm gonna have to go with Japan on both. I okay. Gotta say. <laughs> so, Japan. Thanks for watching our video.